Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and welcome to episode 16 of the DGA podcast. Woohoo! Or as Mario would say, Woohoo! Yeah. I am your host, Vince, and with me is. Crazy haired idly. Crazy haired idly. So, why are you crazy haired idly? Because I spent like a million hours trying to fix it, and it doesn't fix, so I just put it like whatever. <laughs> She's not lying. Before the podcast, she'll spend 5, 10, 15 minutes picking at her hair, and I'm just like, hun, it's okay. It's fine. And you know, it looks nice, but she doesn't believe me, so she's got to pick at it. So if you see her picking at her hair, yell at her in the comments. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Sorry. All right, so here we go. All right, so this is going to be a very musical podcast because of the top five this week. Um, so just make sure that your sound card works perfectly. Make sure that your sound card works perfectly. Wow. <laughs> what? What's wrong wow. with that? More Are you gold, still touching majesty? me? More gold, your what? majesty. All right. Is that like your favorite game? Is that why? No, that's not even from that game. Oh. <laughs> your sound card works perfectly is from Warcraft 2. Oh, whoops. Okay. Not Majesty 2. There's a difference between the two. See, this is why I'm host and you're Same co-host. Same thing, right? Like Star Trek and Star Wars. Excuse me while I find the... Shut up, Wesley. 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 That works. All right. So does everyone's... Your sound card works perfectly. <laughs> that grammatically did not work, but that's okay. Uh, all right (sighs) top five video game music scores or musical scores these are songs that video game composers have created that are amazing um but i have to say we're now walking into a minefield because YouTube and the way it behaves will flag mostly anything music related. So I have painstakingly readjusted some of the songs that we're about to talk about, uh, gave it a little bit of a creative license, shall we say, in the hopes that YouTube doesn't auto flag these songs that we're about to cover. Um, One of them I actually changed. I actually uploaded all of these changed songs to YouTube. One of them still got flagged. So I had to, I had to butcher it. I mean, better it even more than it already was. So wait, even if you speed it up or slow it down, it'll still get flagged or something? I didn't do it enough. So YouTube still auto, it's YouTube's, YouTube's auto algorithm still picked it up and flagged it. So that's what I'm saying. That's so sad. It is sad. I mean, I want to show off this great, like, there's a lot of music, video game music that I want to touch on and cover on, but can't in this kind of setting because of YouTube and copyright and all that crap. That is so silly. It is I sad. Mean, just... I just I'm I'm advertising the game and their composers. I'm not like trying to make money off of this. I'm I'm advertising the crap out of this music and, and these yeah, games. Yeah, you're promoting it. Like yeah. I don't understand uh, uh, whatever. Well that's the way the world works, unfortunately. So what I did was um if at any point in the future, like let's say I upload this podcast later and YouTube does flag something anyway, regardless of how well I prepare for this. I'm going to be putting the following over top of whatever it was that was cut. So if you hear this, it's because I had to overwrite something else. You ready? All right. So if you hear that, that means that one of the following did not make it into the podcast. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Lucky you. <laughs> All right. So I'm not even going to do sound effects for the number fives and number okay. fours. And because we're, we're, this is so musical already. Um, like audio overload. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just too much. So what was... Okay, so I guess I'll talk about my number five first. Is that how yes. we're going to do this? All right. Sure. Um, my number five was... You know what? Let's see if you can tell. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> If a Titanic were sinking at time 16 speed, this is what would be playing. Or like Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's chopping up now. All right. So, think survival game. Think cold. Oh, Frostpunk. Frostpunk, exactly. Duh. Oh, I forgot about that one. Frostpunk has some really good music in it. Like, the entire soundtrack is good, but the mm -hmm. title theme alone is excellent, I yes. think. So, um, and Frostpunk, for those of you that don't know, is a survival game. It's a city builder of sorts where you've got this generator in the middle and it's keeping everyone warm in this post-apocalyptic cold environment. And the weather just keeps getting colder and colder and colder. And you have to, and you have to keep inventing technologies to keep your people warm. And usually there's some kind of end game event that they have to see their way through. It's really good. Yeah. I love that game. I, I it's so fun. It's, it's kind of creepy and pretty immersive mm -hmm. and the music the soundtrack just amplifies all of that so mm -hmm. that was a really good pick i completely forgot about that one though it was either that or i liked the title theme to uh, they are billions which i mm. did i can't i can't play it because i didn't have time to mess with it but yeah. they are billions was another great title theme that was that was my other contender for number five mm -hmm. um but yeah anyway so yeah, that was my number five. What happened to be your number five? Mine was uh, Frostpunk as well. Yeah. No, it wasn't. But try <laughs> no, again. No, it wasn't. It was uh, the Settlers Seven. There's a song. There's a theme song. Is it this one? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Look, look how beautiful the soundtrack is. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you. It makes me hate YouTube. You know what? Just saying. I agree with you that that song is too good to butcher. So I even, I took small snippets in the hopes that YouTube would not. So here we go. Ready? Uh -huh. <laughs> sounded amazing yeah <laughs> here's another one ready <laughs> wow dude <laughs> 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 up that game uh-huh i was pleasantly surprised to hear Unga. you know it was it was really amazing. <laughs> beautiful i i do you want to hear them all together at once no <laughs> i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> that is just wrong dude <laughs> this is a music appreciation podcast and we're I butchering so all weird. of these I have to wonder if that's what you were laughing at. I was, the entire night. I spent the last five hours painstakingly going through these songs and messing with them. Um, oh, man. But yeah, when you first when you first open Settler 7, and you hear this wonderful soundtrack of this lady singing. <laughs> I remove it. 
Do you want to change your number five to Frost no, Punk at this no, point? I, guess not. I mean, it's something you have to do, you know, unfortunately. Uh huh. But, um, yeah, I did not ex expect that song or that main theme song on the Settler 7. And I was like, what in the world is this amazing song? Mm -hmm. That and was that, like, Settler 7 did that to me, like, very rarely did you actually hear an actual person singing on title screens on video games. Mm -hmm. Another rare one at the time was called A Valley of Wind 2 or something like that. And again, mm -hmm. this is not a song I can play because I didn't mess with it. But mm -hmm. um, there was a vocal title sound uh, track to it and it was really good. Um, cool. But yeah, Settler 7 was, I played that once or twice. That's like a... a a town management game of sorts where you have to, you know, farm. And uh, I think you, your main goal is really is to capture territory and um, like, I don't know, expand your empire while managing resources. If I remember yeah. correctly. It was a little like Northgard, but the game mechanics were a bit like, but they were quite different. Would you say they were? Ungun. They were very good. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't have that. I, I liked the game. I really did. I, I actually 100% completed it. But it didn't have any replayability afterwards. Mm -hmm. And the song, I just kept replaying that. So, yeah. <laughs> you it mean, was so good. Was it this song by Chance? All right. What's your number four? <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't have to talk about it. All right. Oh, man. My number four was similar to yours. It's called Battlefield of Eternity. It's on the Heroes of the Storm soundtrack. Um, Battlefield of Eternity is one of the levels, I think. But this is what mm -hmm. it sounds like. And no matter how many times I messed with this, it sounded good. No matter what <laughs> arrangement I did, not what I made to it, like if I slowed it down, sped it up, I was still having a good time with this song, so I'm like, this, you know, you can, that's, you can tell that a song is really good if you mess with it, and it's still really good. Hey, what did that say about the other one? It's not really good. <gasps> no. <laughs> that guitar, though. It sounds like a rave. <laughs> the whole Heroes of the Storm soundtrack is fantastic. Yeah. This is like folk music. The country blinded music. It is. It's very fast. That sounds like a country western music. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think it sounds better fast, to be honest. See, that's what I mean. Like, I, I was, I was, I, I wanted to laugh at this one, but I'm like, this is good. What did I just do? I, I, you know what I mean? Like, it. it like the original's good, this sped up version. I couldn't do anything to this to make it fun. Yeah. I think I prefer this to the original. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> you're, you're so fine. It's, it's really fun. I like it. Yeah. You're fired. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So that was my number four uh, Heroes of the Storm. If you don't know what Heroes of the Storm is, I've covered it before. Actually, we did a top five Heroes of the Storm characters in the last podcast, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. You should know. <laughs> You should know. Um, what was... Actually, you know what? I, I tried to slow it down, too. I didn't know this. I, I tried... Oh, no. Go ahead. What was your number four? Uh, mine was Silent Hill 2 soundtrack. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. That was your number three. Your number four was something else. Was it? Oh. Yeah, you swapped the two around. You oh, told yeah, me. I did swap it. Oh, see, that's it's so hard to pick between these two. All right, mine was StarCraft soundtrack. There oh, we go. So, okay, so was there any song in particular that you liked, or was it oh, just all of it? Oh, my gosh. Um, the one where we're battling in the battleground with the, with the Terrans. All right, was it this one? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I could tell the bass, that bass line. I can't hear it anymore, by the way. Cut off. <laughs> seriously? I can't even hear you. You can't? Uh, seriously? All right, well. Yeah, it's very choppy. All right, my bad. Well, I'll let this play in the background, and folks at home can listen in. This is some great music. Um, it sounds like a, I don't know, a Texas roadhouse falling into a black hole because of the Western theme. Anyway, so 
Tell me about StarCraft 2. Do you enjoy the Terry music the most? The music um, is very nostalgic because when I played the very first uh, sound tr uh, StarCraft, um, some of the music was on there. And when I played StarCraft 2, it was like an updated, amped up, like, I don't mm -hmm. know, revised version of the st of the first soundtrack. But uh -huh. They were very like together. It, it's kind of like The Sims and then The Sims DLC. You know, it was very one game. The Sims. I should have done The Sims, man. I forgot about that. The Sims has their own soundtrack. Are you kidding me? It has like seven soundtracks. I know that they have songs in Simlish, but I didn't realize. I know that's I, okay. I, I guess I remember some of the the title themes from The Sims, but I didn't realize there was like an actual soundtrack. Oh man, dude, their their uh, superstar soundtrack is amazing. It's like all pop and stuff. Then they have like a France soundtrack where it's just like accordion types of songs. Oh, oh I should have done that one instead. Anyways, so I like Starcraft two. Be right back in three hours while I try and f make that doable for you too. <laughs> I know. Uh huh. So. so Go ahead. Yeah. I, so when I play Heroes of the Storm and I hear the throwback, it's like a remastered version of the StarCraft II soundtrack, some of the songs on there. Yeah. And it's just such a throwback, and I love it, and I love the music, and it's just like, oh, it's like I melt. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't really go that fast, though. You sure about that? YouTube. Hey, <laughs> hey, this is this is great quality stuff right here. I'm moving to parlor. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with this? That's suspenseful music, in case you couldn't tell. Are you saying that StarCraft 2 soundtrack is not good? It is good. I could listen to it all day, but again, copyright and all that stuff. So <laughs> I know. Careful. What was your number three? I'm curious. Uh, number three. Let's take a look. Um, <laughs> it was called The Enemy of My Enemy. It was in the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 soundtrack. Okay. Um, and I, of course, have done something to it. David will appreciate this one. It starts off a little slow, but it picks up. I'll just let you listen to it. You can't hear anything? I'll try again. I don't know why you can't hear this, but... Can you hear that? It's very choppy, but yeah, I can hear some of it. I'll speed up to the better parts. On. It's coming this way. Can you hear that? That epicness? No? Alright, let me try again. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with uh, sound pad. Can you hear that? I think I'm breaking the system just by doing this, so... Alright. Call of Duty 2. <laughs> enemy of my enemy. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, by the way, um, is a first-person shooter, but the soundtrack to it, all of the sound, all of the music from the soundtracks are brilliant. I really enjoyed it. So, alright. What cool. was your number three? Um, it was Silent Hill 2. Is it this... I heard it once a long, long time ago on YouTube. Yes, no. I, I didn't even know that that was a thing on there until I saw it on YouTube a long time ago. What, the dog music? Yeah. That is, secret ending. that is a secret ending to Silent Hill 2. So and one of your favorite pieces to piss off ghosts in it, it works. It works. <laughs> I did get actual sound from Silent Hill 2. Here's that. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, you could have actually, um, you could have played my video where I was, where I was playing the piano, right? I was doing one of the songs in, on piano. Yes, I, I remember that. I, re I remember your, your piano music from 10 years ago. And I, I could have done that, but I chose not to. You didn't chose know. To speed it up and ruin the song. Yes. <laughs> but I really, love the I mean, I, I, tr I tried listening to the Silent Hill 2 soundtrack today, and I'm like, eh. you don't like it? It's just so boring. Oh, it's haunting. It's creepy, yeah, but it's not. It's not like <laughs> no. It I doesn't love it. do it for me. It's it's. I guess it's just nostalgia on my end, maybe. Yeah, I mean the game um, was nostalgic. The there's a particular song called "My Dearest Mother." Oh, okay. Where where um a, a woman the lyrics it's it's a woman singing, and it's just so haunting and so creepy, and it talks about how she kind of hates her mom and she wants to kind of murder her in her sleep. Or something wow, like that. well that's nice. Yeah. But it sounds like a very lullaby. It's like a lullaby song, and it's just so creepy when like she gets into the verses, and it's like, okay, this girl's a psycho. Mm -hmm. But it's so, I don't know. I, I think the whole soundtrack is so good. I have most of it on um on my Spotify. the 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 Silent Hill three and four soundtracks I didn't really like. Wasn't um, it like Silent Hill Four: The Room or something? Like it was that. Yeah. Is that just where you were in a like? Is it just you in a room? Like I don't understand the room. It, I never played Silent Hill Four. <laughs> is it just you standing in a room? Like, I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't. You've, you've I never, never played, played it. it. Oh, okay. I right. never played that one. I'm just I'm just picturing how bad of a game this is. Like just standing in a room. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, actually, I think I saw a walkthrough on on uh, YouTube. It was. It was in a room, but there was a hole in the bathroom. And once you get in there, it's like a whole nother world. Is it another? So, is it another room? Another room. <laughs> <laughs> it's a subway, and then a, an ap another apartment complex, and then you always have to come back to your room. And every time you come back to your room, something's a little different, a little off, until like at the end when stuff hits the fan. So it's pretty, it's pretty good. I, listen, man, don't knock Silent Hill. I love Silent Hill. <laughs> I like the dog ending. I'm surprised you can play that song without copyright. I've oh. tried. I up, this is, it was safe. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. For now. <laughs> <sighs> so this is oh, good. This oh, is, oh. Yes, yes. Real quick. On YouTube.com slash Journal Writer... Um, those are videos, my piano videos from like years and years and years back when, um, I used to take my private lessons and, uh, one of the songs on Silent Hill I played on there. So yeah, if you want to see, go check them out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. We're blown to these quick. My number two was... I'm going to have to pull this up because I don't remember. Sogno di Volare, which is from the Civilization VI soundtrack. Mm -hmm. um, Christopher Tin, amazing. He's just His work is so good. Um, a lot of his work is really good. Um, his One of his works were one of the ones I had to redo. But this one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I did two of them. I'm not sure which one I like better. This one is kind of weird. <laughs> Can you hear that? Seriously, you can't hear it. All right, well, okay, just, all right, do this. I'll stay quiet so that they can hear it. All right. Imagine a group of Vikings underwater chanting. That's what that sounds like. Wow. You've been you've been enlightened. And then like this, sirens. <laughs> yes. I hear that.
this isn't so bad. I'm just saying, like... Alright, well, if it had to be sung by chipmunks, this is the version I would listen to, but... <laughs> All right, enough of that. Uh, Civilization VI, the soundtrack, uh, it's not bad, but the title theme music, uh, again, Sogno di Valer, um, I think that's Latin. Um, mm. I think the whole, the whole song is in Latin, um, but it's really good. So go check that one out. Christopher Tin, again, great, great uh, maker of music, composer, whatever. What was your number two? Um, real quick. Yes. Civilization, um, the whole, like, every single piece of song in every single Civilization game, I friggin' love. I really do. I, it gets, like, the, I've listened to, I tried listening to the soundtracks for Civilization VI, mm-hmm. and everything but the title screen was just repetitive and kind of boring, like it was just it. You can tell it was more meant to be background music than like an uplifting title song. Oh, you, know? you said okay. You said earlier that those were from Civ Six. Were you talking about Civ Five then? What are you talking about? You just said that you were listening to music from Civ Six. Yeah. And you didn't like it except for the theme song. Yes. Yes. I liked oh. the title song for Civ Civ Six, which yeah. is Sogno di Valer. I didn't like the rest of the soundtrack. Oh, oh, so the stuff that you played, that's the only ones that you like? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't like the entire Sadness. soundtrack of Civ Six, <laughs> just the title screen music to If Civ I had the sound pad, shut up, Wesley. <laughs> I'll just give you a... <laughs> or maybe a... <laughs> I love the soundtrack to Civ Six. I downloaded it all on my Steam. I downloaded it when they offered it for free on the soundtrack page or whatever. It's it it's feel, like the rest of the soundtrack again feels more like background music than actual mm. like music that you can jam to. Mm. Um, when I'm in a car and I put Sogno di Valer, however you pronounce it, on, I'm like you know I'm pumped up. Like I, it's just a oh, brilliant piece. Yeah. The rest of the soundtrack is just more low key. Yeah. I like the low key. That's the thing. Like, I like the orchestra, live music, just chillax uh, part of the soundtrack, too. Like, I think they both jive with me, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Jive. You jive. Jive. I jive. <laughs> All right. Um, um, that, that's, that's, that's saying, that's in um, Finnish. It, unga is jive, um, in case you didn't know. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, <laughs> What was your number two? Mine was Super Mario Brothers. I think I have that as well. That can't be copyrighted. <laughs> Mario is pretty. Uh, He's hyped. The, uh, the makers of Mario Brothers, a Nintendo, they're pretty strict about that. I'm oh, are they? Yes. Like, there's a soundtrack. Um, it's called. Oh gosh. Um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I'm not going to play it. But yeah. there's a. Um, oh crap. I'd have to like. It's the UC Mario Brothers Super Show soundtrack, something, something, something. It's Mario is rapping. Like Mario and the cast of uh, Mario Brothers are like Yoshi Toad, Princess. They're all rapping. Mm-hmm. So it's it's so it's so funny, but it's so good, but it's copyrighted. Mm. It's it's which is a shame because it's so silly, but some of the music's actually really good. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah. Um. Another Mario for you. <laughs> that iconic. <laughs> mm. You can't hear it. Mm-mm. All right. Let me skip ahead and see if you can hear it then. Think techno rave. I can hear it kind of when you speak and when your mic picks up, but then oh, after that I can't hear it. That's so weird. All right. Well, I'll let the kids listen to it for a little bit. I hear some of it. It sounds like Bowser. Yeah. Like Bowser oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, if Bowser were to compose the Mario Brothers theme, that's what it would yeah. sound like. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's funny. 
All right, I do have a... Uh, when I think Mario, though, my favorite piece for Mario is actually from Mario the Game Boy version. Mm. Um, I think around level three, Mario was in this, like, Chinese or Japanese-themed level. And I apologize in advance. This is where you're going to want to turn down the volume because uh, I had to make the pitch quite high. Oh, no, dogs. Dogs in here. No. So you're welcome. Uh, yes, that was that was from. Hey, again, write your write letters to YouTube and, and thank them for their overzealous copywriting uh, practices. Yeah. So uh, Mario Brothers. Now, are you talking Mario One or Two? Because they uh, all had distinct soundtracks. Yeah, they did. Um, I think my favorite was Super Mario Brothers World. The one, um, there was, uh, well, no, there's like snippets of every single one that I like, but mostly the Super Mario Brothers world that I liked. Um, the, the when you get the star. Yeah. Yeah. And the ocean. Like, yeah. The <laughs> We're so off I'm sure. It's auto tuned. It's fine. I, I have auto tuned. It'll it'll come or like through the fine. Do 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 do. Yeah. That one I can play on the piano too. I think that's Actually, I have a funny story about that. So I remember um we were where were we? We were at a nursing home, and it was a. It was called Unga. Yes. Yeah, it was, um, I went to a retreat with, um, my church and, um, we were, uh, we went to an elderly nursing home just to, you know, just play music and sing and stuff or whatever. So I went on the piano and I started playing, uh, Beethoven and Mozart. And when I was finished, I started playing, <laughs> did I they get it? The Marios. One guy, um, from the retreat came in and just went, oh my gosh, from Beethoven to Mario, that is awesome. And like all the old people were just like, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What is this Mario you speak? <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty funny. It was pretty hilarious. That's awesome. <laughs> Good job. That deserves a. Oh, 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 God. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one of these days, one of my goals is to actually learn all of the music from Super Mario Brothers. So, yeah, hopefully one day. When you get your piano. Yeah, you'll 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 be hearing lots of it. I'm sure. Mm, that's what I <laughs> buy you headphones. I can't wait. Well, it's gonna be a grand piano, right? So it's gonna be like uh, no. Yeah. Good yeah. luck fitting a grand piano in this small house. <laughs> Where the heck are you gonna it. put it? I could take the TV out or the dining room table out. Yeah, no, I'll just take it, it still out. a grand piano would still not fit in that dining room. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I have a small. Um, I'll big, put on top of the microwave. I have it's a fine. baby. I have a baby grand, like a baby electric grand. So it's fine. You know, you, you know what brand I'm gonna get you? There's one that'll fit. It's called Fisher oh, no. Price. No, no, I don't want a xylophone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Fisher Price. <laughs> bring, 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 Toy pianos, anyway. That's awful. What's your number one? <laughs> it's the same as yours. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I'll let you guys, I'll, I'll let you listen to it, and if you can tell what it is, great. Um, here we go. This is the one I had to make faster because the fast wasn't fast enough for you to, to, to wow. not pick up. Yes. It's still, at times two speed, it's still picked up and flagged. All right, here's the other version. Is this Super Mario? <laughs> Oh, my God. 
You can't hear anything? Okay. Well, kind of. It's, but it's very, very tough. It's, it's just, it's as low pitched as I could possibly make it so YouTube wouldn't see what it was. Oh, is this a five? Baba Yetu. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Wasn't that your number one? Yeah. Baba Yetu? Yeah. Baba Yetu. Again, Christopher Tin. Can't say enough good things about him. Christopher Tin makes some amazing music. And Baba Yetu, I think that was actually Civilization Four, wasn't it? Oh, was it? I didn't know. I thought it was five. Um, I have to look this up now. <laughs> um, Civ Four. I'm pretty sure it was Civilization Four. Uh, Civilization Five. I don't know what that was. Uh. Amazing music still. I loved all the Civ uh, Civ game music. Well, what I don't remember. You no, know, it was four. Sid was Meier's okay. Civilization Four. Uh, I don't know what cool. five was. Um, I didn't. Uh, maybe I should look that up at some point. I'm always getting all of them mixed up because they're all. I don't know. They're all good and kind of similar, kind of repetitive. Maybe. I but... still want. I still <laughs> want the uh, FMV advisors um, in mm -hmm. Civilization Two. You had an Elvis impersonator for your like your your morale. You had a military guy for your military, and they were real people talking in front of a camera, and they would change outfits and looks based on the era that you were currently in. Wow! It was it's it was wonderful. So anyway, awesome. but yeah, Civilization in itself is there. It's a great four X game, but uh, Christopher Ten did some amazing work work with Bobby Ed too, and I think that's. Uh, I think it's translated to the Lord's Prayer in Swahili, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. So I, th I think yep. that language is Swahili, which is mm -hmm. interesting. So I'm not a religious person, but I really like the music. Yeah, so. I like it because um, of the content, the text, and I love the song. I remember trying to learn it. I had the Swahili lyrics up there, and I'm trying to memorize it and learn it. It's so difficult when you don't know the language. But it's fun, like to try to learn it. Do you have but... a favorite cover? Like I've, I, there's so many covers of Baba Yetu on the internet. My favorite, I think, was the one that you sent me. Uh, yeah, it was the army guy. Like it was, it was the navy. It was the navy band, and they uh -oh. that that guy with the flat top haircut was singing Baba Yetu, and the Navy behind them. It was, of all, of all bands to cover this <laughs> game, the Navy, I think, outshone every other uh, <laughs> cover band out there. So, I don't know. I like that one. Um, there was one that I liked um, that you part I don't normally like covers, I'll be honest with you. I I'm not too big into covers, but mm -hmm. um, there was one that I sent you where they did Baba Yetu as a choir, and you didn't like it because it was too fast-paced, but I liked it because I thought they just nailed it. Were they making like, those sound effects? The whoosh, they, were, they were making, the, they were swaying and doing the sound I effects during the... So, that was corny. it was a little cheesy, I know, but the ladies, um, they had such angelic voices, it, it, and I thought it was so cool. The um, I know who you're talking about. That choir, they were on America's Got Talent, I think, or something like that. Oh, were they? Um, cool. yeah, it was it was it the lady uh, composer or the one that was directing everything? I don't know what she's called. The no, some man directing it. Oh, okay, but the, and yeah. then at the end, at the end. These two guys with like uh, Swahili outfits came out and started speaking in Swahili at the end of it. Okay, that wasn't it then. This is a different one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there was but, one America. There was one mm -hmm. choir that was on America's Got Talent. They did Baba nice. Yetu um, and some other ones, and uh, and some of other Christopher Tin's music. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I love to watch on repeat the live version of Baba Yetu though, when Christopher Tin is like. Comp um, doing the little composer thing yeah the, the wand and yeah. yeah and the dude and the woman the woman has like one part she goes ah yeah 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 that's all she does <laughs> and it's so good <laughs> she just stands there through the entire thing silent and then out of nowhere ah, yeah, yeah, yeah! like xena's <laughs> warrior princess no not that <laughs> but ah, yeah, 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 yeah. it was it was so powerful just that one little tiny line yeah, right. it's like you wouldn't expect it <laughs> 
and the guys they just they're they're all amazing like i love watching it live i love um i love live orchestra music <laughs> see i like i i prefer the music when it's not live i prefer when it's in um a when studio? it's when it's a, yeah in a studio controlled environment to where the sound like the sound is actually sounds better whereas mm-hmm. in a live performance like it's missing something Mm. in a studio like i guess stuff is added to it to make it more reverb i don't know but it's just i guess it depends i i used to be like that i used to be like that and then my dad he really showed me um live music and he showed me um how to perform live like when i was singing and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and it feels like a jam session and it when you see live music it looks like they're just up there just playing music playing their heart out and you can feel that like through their performance and it just makes me appreciate live music so much more it's ridiculous <laughs> agreed i mean yeah. there are some live performances that i've seen that i actually prefer better it's just mm-hmm. it's weird so as long as there's not some idiot in the audience going woo, 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 yeah like it ruins the, the it, it ruins the like i i don't want to hear some guy wooing i want to hear mm-hmm. the music not not some idiot anyway yeah kids learn from this if you ever go to a concert, you know, kind of keep your voice down so you can hear the people play and stuff. I remember I was reco- when I was younger, I was recording uh, this guy singing. Uh, it was in a karaoke place, and <laughs> uh-huh. and I and I went in the background, woo, like constantly. And when I played it back, I was like, oh god, I, I feel so stupid. This is just awful. It's, it's like when I tried <laughs> recording songs from the radio, like from my boombox. <laughs> And I would, yeah. I would get the first 10 seconds of the DJ yeah. and then the last 10 seconds of the song, the DJ is just talking over. I'm like, shut up. Let me hear yeah. the rest of it. You should hear my mixtape. It's, it's the funniest thing ever. You just hear like the radio ending sound and all that. Uh-huh. Like <laughs> Elton awesome. John's coming to his climactic end or whatever. And then you've got some, hey, this is WKRP. Um, shut up. The fact that we used to do that, it just signifies just how, how old, old we are. Yes. We are bo- yeah. I said the word boombox. I mean, that's old, okay? Yeah. The boombox that I had was just a cassette player. Is that where they got the term boomer from? Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know. Is that where... I, I don't know where the term boomer... No, baby boomer. Like, baby boomer as in, like, they breed a lot. Oh, but I heard that boomer, just boomer, was like an old person, like uh, out of out of the times and all that. Like know. you, like you're right, like you are right now. You don't know what boomer means. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know Gen X. I don't know Gen Y, I Gen Z. I, I I don't know the the, the T virus. I don't I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what? Resident Evil? Been, I don't know. Have you been playing Ark without me? I've been playing Resident Evil. <laughs> the T-Rex? Okay. The T-Virus. Anyway. <laughs> do you I, have any honorable mentions? Um, I do. I'll, I'll play. This is one that I know it will work because I've been doing it for the last 15 podcasts. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the entire Double Dragon Neon soundtrack uh, by Jay Kaufman. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It takes the music from Dr- Double Dragon, gives it a, a, a neon 80s spin. It's really good. Um, nice. The game's pretty good, too. I like the look of the game. And this one, I think, is safe. Not Star Wars? It's Star Wars, oh, but oh, it's, it's not the Star Wars Fox. theme song. Star Fox. No. No. It's Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3. There was uh, 1 and 2. I think this is for the Super Nintendo, I think, or N64, something like that. No, N64, I think it was. Um, okay. It's a Star Wars game, primarily built around, you know, fly your, fly your ship over here, destroy this. You know, it was, it was Star Wars, but it was good. But the soundtrack to it was excellent. Now, there is one that I do like that I can't play. Um, because it sounds too much like the Imperial March, but there was an old game called Force Commander, Star Wars Force Commander. It was a ground-based RTS game where you were the Empire. You got to play as the Rebels too, but it was 
pretty crappy, but the music for it, they took the Imperial March and added this rock ballad to it. it you could clearly tell it was Star Wars Imperial March, but oh, I think I think the name of the song is Imperial Rage or something like that. Go, go, go YouTube Imperial Rage or Star Wars Force Commander soundtrack. Um, it's really good. So anyway, did you have any honorable mentions yourself? Um, I did. Um, there's a game, old game, 2005, 15 years ago, from Winter Wolves on the on the website Winter Wolves. There's a game called Magic Stones, and it's an okay game. Um, I love it because it's one of the first games I've ever played online, and um. I know um, not a lot of people would probably like it, but... What is it, it a match a, three or...? No, it's a turn-based um, f- card deck building. Um, well, yeah, kind of deck building game, but it's so deep. You can gather artifacts, you can have runes, you can do magic spells, and it's a turn-based um, fighting game oh, okay. uh, with cards. Okay. And you have you have a certain amount of mana... And all the cards that you pull out um, cost a certain amount of mana, and you gain e- mana every turn. But the theme song to it is only about probably 45 seconds, maybe a minute long. Mm-hmm. And it gets repetitive, but I love it. I put it on a loop, and I just like memorize that thing, and I'm just singing along to it. <laughs> it's so annoying, I'm sure it does some people, but mm-hmm. it's very silent, hilly. Okay. Actually, Ma- Magic Stones was actually my number uh, three. Until you swapped uh, it out? Yeah, until I swapped it out with Silent Hill. Because it, it is very taverny, though. It's a very taverny, but haunting taverny type of song. Very Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. It's so hard to explain. But it's a fun game, and I like it. And one of these days, I'm going to actually drop 20 bucks on it. So, yeah. <laughs> it's still for sale? It's still for sale for twenty dollars. Yeah, it even has like a DLC um, where you can purchase the runes and artifacts from a magic shop that you can't get in the core game. But it's it's super fun. I'm sure the winter sale is coming, so just put on your wish list and let me know, and we'll see what we can do. (laughs) Eventually, eventually. I'm not I'm not like rushing to buy it or anything. I'm just saying that one day when I'm older. When I'm older, when I get a job. When you're older. (laughs) When I'm over 40. Yeah. (laughs) One of these days. But, and I feel bad because the the developer, he said that this was back in his early programming days. So, (laughs) it's not as good as his other games. But I love it, man. I think, I think he did a great job. What other, did he have, what, what other games did he make? (laughs) He does mostly uh, visual novel games. Uh, no. uh, yeah. L- the Lauren Princess. I don't know if you ever heard of that. I covered that. The Lauren Princess. Yeah. He that was made one that of the one. first visual novels I ever covered. And I realized I didn't like it. <laughs> he made that one. I thought it was okay. There's one that I really, really liked, though, called Planet Side. You might like that one. It's a turn-based kind of a visual novel. You make your own choices. But it has a battling system that's actually really fun. It's Sounds called- familiar. Pl- it's called like Planet Side Express, something like that. And it's pretty fun. It has like all these different endings that you can unlock. But my favorite by far from him is Magic Stones because it was pretty in depth. The fact that you can collect all types of equipment <laughs> and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's pretty great. Oh, oh, sorry. That was just an honorable mention. My bad. It's my fine. other honorable mentions are League of Legends soundtrack. Is it just I, that Legends Never Die song, or is it, like, no, everything? No, no, there's so much. Yeah, like, all... You know how... You know how in Awesome Knots, they have songs for each character? Yes. Uh, League of Legends has that, too. Oh, okay. Well, and, okay, and, cool. And it is so good. Like, stuff like that can actually be on an album and sell, to, like, for records. Because it is so good. And, and they're... Um, Esports songs are so darn amazing too. I love all of is them. Is there a character song that you like the best? Like yes, um, I think I think you heard it once. Oh gosh, what's her name? I forgot her name. But all it is is ah yeah, ah yeah. Those are the lyrics. It's just ah. Oh my <laughs> gosh! But it was so good. The music was, it was so good. 
<laughs> Jin. There's a character named Jin, and oh god, it's like theater and theatrical. Um, so is it Sonia? No, not Sonia. Sora's song is good. Um, oh, I have it on Spotify too. I have all of this stuff on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Tom Kench's song. Okay, anyways, so um, then my other honorable mention that I just remembered it would actually be on my list is the sims okay fair enough yeah i'm I mean, gonna send you all that stuff dude all right well there's a lot i wanted to put on like this podcast but like for example i'm just gonna read off the ones that were here that i wanted to put on here but i wasn't sure would i didn't have time to test all of these on youtube i'm not gonna yeah uh there's a diablo one there's a a, a town song called tristram it's it's got the the gentle guitar strumming really good um there was dungeon defenders that that whole soundtrack was decent um uh, the batman nes music was pretty good uh bubble bobble wasn't bad uh castlevania like one two and three had a distinct soundtrack that was pretty good command and conquer which is an rts had some great music um i already mentioned double dragon uh, there was goldeneye 64 which was for the nintendo 64 but then the follow-up was perfect dark um the perfect dark soundtrack was also pretty good it was like this her name was joanna and she it was like it played like 007 goldeneye from n64 but um it was more of a female protagonist and had aliens and it was pretty good uh mega man had some great music um all throughout the different um games orcs must die had a decent soundtrack Shadowgate uh, was good. Star Fox, Street Fighter 2. Um, I already mentioned they are billions. XCOM, the loadout screens from when you're equipping your guys with different weapons. Like XCOM, The War of the Chosen, um, Enemy Unknown, all those different games had different loadout music and all of them were good. Um, so yeah, I, there's a lot more that I wanted to put in here, but um, it's difficult to do that with two hands tied behind your back and only being allowed to use your feet to create a podcast because of YouTube's just copyright in general. So, you know, I apologize if, if this, this was kind of limiting, but I couldn't do very much more than this. I wanted yeah. to this. There's so much you can do with video game music out there. There's so many good tunes out there. If there was a way to bypass YouTube and just release a podcast or just one episode or just music, uh, you know, just show that off. I would, but, you know, YouTube right now is my only main source of distribution. So, awesome. So that was our top five um, video game musical scores. Um, I, I thought it was going to go by a lot quicker, but I'm glad we actually filled the time. Um, we have a lot of stuff to get into. Uh, Patreon for one. Um, Patreon people, um, stuff was deducted from December 1st, so all these amounts should be updated. Uh, Ratsy's pledged $135 this month for a lifetime of $3,095, which is amazing. Scotty R, he upped his pledge from $80 to $580 this month, saying Merry Christmas in his email to me. Um, so he has a lifetime of $830. Um, he said, just to paraphrase, he, he, he knew that I was going through some rough patches. He was just trying to, you know, give me a, a something to look forward to, like a high a high for this year. 2020 has been pretty crappy all around. I'll get to that too. Um, Greg Howe pledged $10 for a lifetime of 412. Uh, Brian pledged 50 bucks for a lifetime of 300. Mind a lot pledged $5 for a lifetime of 70. Rip Alpha pledged a dollar for a lifetime of 44. Alyssa Barrett pledged a dollar for a lifetime of $3, and Rabid Omiba pledged a dollar for a lifetime of $3. I sent keys to the top four people. So, Ratsy, Scotty, Greg, and Brian, check your emails, let me know. I think uh, Greg actually already got back to me. Um, and if you already have the game, let me know. I'll swap it out with something else. Uh, Twitch people, um, I had some subscribers this month. I don't know how many I had. I think it was like 12... Uh, most of it was gift subscriptions. Uh, White Knight 74648. Um, every time I read his, um, <laughs> every time I read his username, 
like I, I wanna pull the one seven three four six seven three two one four seven six Charlie three two seven eight like nine, every seven, time seven, seven, six four three Tango seven three two Victor seven three one one oh seven my eight, eight. Gosh. yes so anyway so thank you White Knight thirty two months which is awesome uh, subscription on Twitch Bessa seven oh two thirty months Mistima fifteen months um, X Misa eighty eight is three months Rapid Amoeba three months. Uh, Kira Lockhart was gifted a subscription from White Knight, I believe, um, for one month. Ap Apollo and Nasty, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. One that was a gift subscription, I believe, from Rabbit Amoeba. Uh, Benjabum, Smyrtle, Daddy and Son Gaming, and Iron Lion M4N uh, were also gifted one month subscriptions from Rabbit Amoeba. And then Nev Plays is on a four month streak. I think due to Rabbit Amoeba gifting yes. her uh, her the subscription. So your Rabbit Amoeba has been carrying half of this list. So thank you so much, Rabbit Amoeba, for your, your support. I do appreciate it. Um, since you've gifted so much, um, let, I know you're not a Patreon. Oh, yeah, you are a Patreon member. So maybe what I could do is maybe send you a key or two. Just let me know if you have Humble Bundle. If you don't, that gives me more options. If you do have Humble Bundle, if you do subscribe to it, I'll try and find a key that isn't from Humble Bundle. All right, so that was Patreon and Twitch stuff. Uh, thank you so much for all your support. Uh, new releases, uh, Sam and Max Save the World, which is a remastered version of the older Telltale game, which I've never played. 20 bucks. Um, Empire of Sin, 40 bucks. That's a new release. Worms Rumble, 15 bucks. And Project Wingman, 25 bucks. None of those have launch sales for whatever reason. Um, the sales for this week... Um, Satisfactory on Steam, 20% off, $24. SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yeah, I was digging. 34% off, $19.79. Ah! Uh, Hell Let Loose, 25% off, $22. And What Remains of Edith Finch, 30% uh, off, $8. Not a whole lot on Steam right now. Green Man, that's because the Black Friday sales are done and over with, so this is like normalcy. Green Man Gaming, I have an affiliation with Green Man Gaming, I get a cut, so whenever you buy through Green Man Gaming links uh, that I put in my descriptions, uh, I get a small cut. The City Skylines franchise is on sale, anywhere from 58 to 79% off each each DLC, each game, 5 to $7 each, so go check that out. Dead by Daylight, same deal. Uh, franchise is on sale 53 to 67% off anywhere from 2 to $7 per DLC slash game. Doom franchise 75% off anywhere from 2 to $25 and Fallout franchise 73% off on average um, anywhere from 5 to $17 depending on the game. And then Humble Bundle, there is a VR sale, tons of games. I didn't bother writing them all down, but go check that out if you have a VR headset. Uh, Seven Days to Die is 71% off, $7.22. RimWorld, 23% off, $26.77. Battle Brothers, 58% uh, off, $12.74. And Space Crew, 41% off, $11.89. Okay, so that was our sales. I guess we'll move on to our Spanish sentence of the week. And, of course, that does deserve its own uh, sound effect, if I can find it. Uh, there it is. It would not be Spanish sentence of the week time without this. I would not be able to proceed. This is another song that... I'm forgiven! I like your, your My brothers and there. sisters of the fluid. continuum have taken me back. I'm Shut up, Wesley. So, you got really blue and wavy all of a sudden. Like, <laughs> I thought, whoa, I walked into I a rave. Like, I'm, in the, I'm in the Latin Ocean. I, I, I see. Okay. <laughs> this, by the way, is another song that ghosts don't like in Phasmophobia. <laughs> yes. So, estas, esta, esta, esta. Uh, galetis, uh, that's uh, guillotine. Uh, so, esta guillotined uh, Blanca. So, one person guillotined another person. Uh, son para mor mori. Uh, she's morse morseful of her uh, of her actions. Uh, her son is morse. Esta's son is morseful 
for because Esta killed Blanca. I think that's what that means. And then Debo Tenor Un Sumanistro de Siete Años. Well, Siete Años is seven days. Um, whereas Debo, uh, that's that's slang for Debra in Spanish. Uh, Debra, Debo. Hey, Debo. Uh, like Esta, it's Debo. Uh, Debo Tenor. Uh, so Debra is a tenor. She sings in a choir. Um, un sumanistro. Um, that's uh, Spanish for sumo wrestler. So Debra sings to a sumo wrestler for seven days. Did I get this right? Say the whole sentence again. I'm very curious. I don't know if I can. <laughs> you don't remember. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Blanca's son was morseful because Esta's guillotine, guillotined uh, or garroted Blanca. And Deborah, who was in a choir, uh, sang to a sumo wrestler uh, for seven days. Very good. Is that correct? Perfect. Next segment. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and end it there. Wow. I'm getting closer every single time. Every time I yeah. do this. Yeah. Oh, you're you're so fluent. I can't wait until people start talking to you. If I go, okay. if I if I meet your family right now, um, I don't think I would need any help. No, Seriously. not at all. No. <laughs> Sumo wrestlers and all. <laughs> yes. So what is right. this? It's estas estas galletas blancas son para morirse. Debo tener un suministro de siete años. Yeah. Which means. These white cookies are to die for. I must have a seven-year supply of them. Put that cookie down! Now! Put that cookie down! Put that cookie down! Now! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Macadamia and that. This is me, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Put that cookie down! Now! Stop it! Are you done stuffing your face? Yes. Merry oh, Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, all right. So I think that's it. Um, I do. Serious face. I do want to uh, quickly announce that uh, unfortunately one of our ferrets did pass away. Um, yep. Tara. Uh, she was ill. Let me go ahead and get a picture of her up here. Uh, she's the one on the left. And uh, she had uh, insulinoma, which is a tumor on her pancreas. Mm -hmm. And that causes her body to produce too much insulin. So she had a diabetes kind of thing going on. Uh, too much. Uh, her blood sugar was way too, way too low. Bless you. Sorry, and um, yeah. So between that and she also had an adrenal gland disease where she was losing her hair. So between the two yeah. diseases, she was in a lot of pain. She couldn't walk on her back legs anymore. Uh, it was she was suffering. So we made the decision to, you know, to unfortunately put her down. So we're kind of out of sorts this week. Um, that happened just last night, and we're still reeling from it. But um, yeah. So wherever Tara is, hopefully she's okay, and um, you know, hopefully we'll see her again someday but so yeah so we're gonna end on a really high note right now um <laughs> um so thank you so much for um watching our podcast and all of your support it's been great um if you guys haven't already subscribed to me on twitch and youtube that way you can stay up to date with any new content i happen to publish this is vince and Ida Lee. thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time Thanks, guys, so much for your support and for watching and listening. Bye, guys. Bye.